Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this new edition of Sotorial Talk. Hello, Sonia. How do you do, darling? Hi. It's good to be back. How yeah, are you? It's, it's been a while. It has. Yeah, we've been asked so many times to go back to our podcast format. So this episode will be a YouTube episode as well as a podcast. And today we're going to speak about manners. Why do manners are important? And But first of all, darling, we, I would like to redefine what manners mean. What is your definition of manners? Um, I think it's just two words, behaving well. Um, and that's just off the top of my mind. But uh, I think manners is also a culture, depending on which country you're in, which situation you're in. There's different cultural things to be aware of. But basically, it's just behaving well in my, in my mind. Yes, and um, me too. But um, I ask you the definition again because, you know, some people, and specifically the young generation, mm -hmm. can be a, be a little bit reluctant to learn what we used to to call the good manners. I think you had something in the U.S. and in the U.K. for sure. It's called finishing school. Tell me about what finishing school. Oh. It doesn't exist in France. Oh actually. well, I mean, I, it's not just in the U.S. I think that it's in it's in England and. Um, Great Britain. Uh, I would say also probably in France as well. A finishing school may be called different things in different countries, but basically it's just teaching the fundamentals of how to behave. For example, socially, um, maybe with the table, you know, how to set the table, um, what type of mannerisms you want to have during a dinner, um, things like how you behave at ceremonies like weddings, funerals, um, just sort of the niceties uh, that you can be aware of. It doesn't take that long to learn them and then abide by that. And it's sort of like a code of respect between you and other people. It, does, it, it still exists? In, in well, the, well I, I did go. <laughs> My mom sent me to finishing school, but yes. I actually just... Um, uh, didn't I didn't. Finish, I didn't finish finishing school. finishing school. No, I didn't. I went to quite a few, but then I, I never finished. But my question is that uh, I'm sorry to say, uh, everybody, know, you're not exactly 16 year old anymore. So does it no. still exist to this day? Do do they? Uh, do these finishing yeah. schools still exist? I've never well, heard I mean, about them in France, for example. I mean, I guess in a certain. In certain types of circles, it does. Yes. And, um, you know, you have the coming out from when you become an adult, like uh, a debutante ball, or yes. there's ceremonies for men, too, it's even in the Jewish uh, tradition. Okay. Um, and, and everyone has their own form of what you want to call finishing school or maybe an education that they want to pass on to their children. But it's, it's sort of outdated but yes. i imagine it does still exist yeah yeah i'm asking this this question to you because as no i know that specifically the young generation they're a little bit say okay all oh, this is old fashioned stuff. exactly yeah and, uh, but what we wanted to show you during this show actually this is the first show of a series of show that we are preparing on manners and different way to show good manners and how it is important in our opinion in this world to continue to cultivate this idea of good manners. Um, well, uh, the young generation, I want, we want to, to show them that it can be, first of all, useful, it can be interesting, and it can harvest a lot of dividends in your life. And we'll, uh, we'll show you why in a different episode that will come. But I'll remind all, you, we already did the Art of Conversation, which was based upon, right. uh, I think, an 1866 philosophy. So yes. if you like that kind of thing, that's great. But what bothers me is these days people think it's almost a waste of time to have good manners. Mm. And so I would like to try to ignite like a fire um, in people to see like what the benefits are and why it's going to help you as a person and also help you make other people feel better about themselves. It's not cool to be nasty and to be uh, confrontational and to disregard people altogether. Um, and although there's probably a time for that, yes, but, but in my opinion, it's, yeah. you know, it's great to know at least. Yes, we're going to be back to this more in depth during mm -hmm. this episode, but I wanted to add something to what you said. Of course, we agree on that. But um, for me, manners is a kind of a um, bridge between the exterior, what you show, and the interior, who you are. I think that the way you dress, but even more important, the way you behave tells a lot about who you are. I'm not speaking about people who are 
overdoing things and try to really put a lot of some kind of old-fashioned manners, you know, not overdoing, but because I believe that good manners are most of them instinctive. But what is interesting for me is that this balance between the what you show to others and who you really are shows a lot in your manners. And in my opinion, good manners are long, longer, much longer remembered than a great outfit. Mm, that's true. And this is very that's important. Yeah. And even if we are here in tutorial talks, we speak about dressing well, we speak about, you know, how to be the best image of yourself and to really become the best version of yourself, still manners. For me, I can tell you, um, um, when somebody um, uh, notice your good manners, he will remember your manners much more than your outfit. That's true. Yeah, I and agree this, with that. This is a very important <laughs> point. So uh, I was saying just before that most of the manners are instinctive. But the point is that when we, call, we talk about manners, in fact, what do we talk about? I don't want to sound too much intellectual, but we talk about social codes. We talk, we talk about social rules. And in my opinion, there's um, uh, a lot of sociologists that have been studying on this subject, and they all have the same question. To see if a social code or a social rule is a good one or a bad one, there's only one question to ask. Do these codes or social codes, or what we call good manners, are civilizing, that is to say, brings about civilization or something good between the people, or do, are they oppressive? Because some, we can also accept the fact that some manners or some way to behave were some kind of oppression from pe for people in the past. Not going into tough subject like, you know, um, the domination of some races against other races, you know, this kind of... But mm -hmm. still, manners are very important. And the question to ask is, do, do these manners bring civilization, peace? Um, how can I say, good relationship between the people, or are they oppressive? Do they mark uh, a line between different kind of people? You understand that? This I, is I do understand. Important. I think a, another element of that is, um, can you be an effective leader? Can you be successful? Can you reach what you want to reach in life with good manners? Because I think in today's world, we almost think that you have to be harsh, Yes. Um, sometimes nasty, yeah. um, uh, really confrontational, and extremely, come across as extremely strong before you can get anywhere. And so we want to look at why that's not necessarily true, how if you have mastered the art of being the kind of person that you really want to be, you can still do all these things and do them much better. Yeah, you describe you are describing, darling, what what I call personally the Twitter society, mm. because the world is for sure politeness is droning. You say droning. Oh yeah, politeness. people think oh that's boring. You know that you, you want to get more hearts and likes, be as ugly as possible, and make people laugh yes. at, at the expense of sacrificing another person. And also Twitter is for me the place of the most extreme brutality, mm -hmm. the most extreme rudeness, rudeness, how you call it? Rudeness. R yeah. Rudeness. Yeah. And this is uh, something that I discovered recently because I was using Twitter here and there just to be updated, to stay updated on the news. It's easy. And I, I thought it was the concept of Twitter. But Twitter became a really hate place. That is to say, um, I liked its idea that uh, the internet was originally the not the the goal because I didn't know that I didn't I, I, I don't think that as the internet was not created by one person it's just something that happened to exist but the the original internet the idea was to give a, a share of voice to everybody everybody can express themselves everybody can open a blog everybody can open a YouTube channel everybody can express themselves and uh, speak to the world the problem is that. Twitter has almost institutionalized the fact that you have the right to literally slander um, the reputation of anybody, uh, insult anybody. And what I discovered recently is that the people who are using Twitter, most of the time, the people who are very active on Twitter, screaming, shouting, insulting constantly, are a minority. 
but a screaming mm. minority. Really? The okay. vast majority of the people remain silent. Mm. And this is why uh, I'm, I'm coming back. I try to impose our manners on Twitter without success. Mm. Uh, on the contrary, on this YouTube channel, we're very proud of the fact that um, our thread of comments is extremely courteous. Mm -hmm. And we are... Um, we, we try to really um, make sure that people who are commenting, we, are, we accept any opinion, we accept any point of view, as long as there are courtesy yeah, and civilized, you, you, yeah, civilized conversation. And it's something which is very important. A second subject I'd like to, to address with you, darling, is that some people say that manners are um, um, not natural. They are you have to in, in, enforce the, uh, them into people. And, um, and uh, well, I, I would like your opinion on that because some people said, ah, oh, you know, manners is for the aristocrat. There's no aristocrat anymore. Um, what is your opinion? About well, that? I think that manners can feel artificial. Yes. Um, I know, for example, when we have people going through our house for renovation, for example, yes. um, some of the happens to be men we also have women here but the the men will go to extremes to make sure I walk in front of them but I mean after 15 times it's getting a little bit uh, silly okay so I think it depends on the situation that's an artificial manner to me because it you know we're walking around we're all together we're trying to make decisions and nobody cares who walks first in front of the other person although I know the intention is very good yes. but I think you have to have common sense um, in combination with manners, because yes. when you lose common sense, it becomes a little bit silly. Yeah, and uh, you mean that people sometimes overdo it, and then it's it's like showing off a little bit, yet you want to have manners. It's mm. because manners has to be natural, in right, my opinion. Right. And that's something also which is, uh, you remember, if you follow this uh, channel since um, um, well a short time or a longer time, you may have heard our definition of elegance, which is putting others at ease. Mm -hmm. I think that a gentleman or a gentlewoman or an elegant person, uh, whether a man or a woman, uh, when he has the ability or she has the ability to put people around her or he, him at ease, that's our definition of elegance. And it goes mm -hmm. through manners. That's right. You know, that is to say the way you behave with others. I have a, a very interesting... Oh, first of all, before going uh, in my next interesting question about the French reputation about manners. Um, the thing also, there's one thing, there's another definition for me of manners is um, put thoughts in the kind of people you will meet during the day. And that will tell a lot, you know, it's important. It's the way, it's, it's the same idea of when you dress up. You know, when I dress up in the morning, I'm always asking myself, who am I gonna meet? Though these people are, you know, more casual or more formal, do they like elegance? What is the kind of environment? And dressing for with an intention, dressing for the occasion is it's the most important thing in I think in our thing. But it's the same for manners. You know, try to understand who you're gonna have to deal with. Try to understand who you're gonna. Well, kind of the nicest thing that just points like directly at what you're speaking about is when, for example, if if you've given a gift to someone, um, for example, a pocket square. I'll just yes. use that as an example, and then you show up two years later to meet this person, and they're wearing this pocket square that yeah. you gave them. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why, but that's just like. Whew, it just like infuses something yeah, really yeah. nice. We, 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 we witnessed this when, I don't remember, I, I have a memory. Several coming. times, I remember several, several times. times yeah. I remember a story of one of my good friends, Philippe Bloch, who's a very successful writer in France, a business writer. And he said to me, uh, um, he gave me an example uh, of a story he had with uh, somebody from t t Toyota company in Japan. Mm -hmm. And he said, one day I was with the, the CEO of Toyota because Toyota was investing in France for a company, uh, for a factory, actually, uh, in Valenciennes, if I remember well. Uh, and uh, he said, the first time I met this CEO, I gave him as a little token, just, a, you know, a pen with the title of my book on it. I was some kind of <laughs> 10 cents advertising pen. And then I met him again. He, 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 he told me he, he met him again like three years after. No way. And yeah, the and guy, the, pen? the guy made sure that for this meeting with Philip, that's the name of my friend, he will use 
that exact same pen. Wow. Do you understand? Wow. This that's, is, that's amazing. This is manners. Yeah, you know, is right. that having a little consideration because the, for me, the deepest definition we have is that when you're alone with yourself, you don't need manners. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you are with somebody else, right, you right, need you manners. Do. I'm thinking of another example. Um, when we go and visit tailors, if we have anything that that tailor has made, yes. we usually try to wear it. Yes, of course. If it's possible. Yeah, of course. But that's instinctive. Mm -hmm. Right. I think everybody can 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 think of the same thing, even in in other situations in life. Mm -hmm. You know, try to to mm -hmm. to show respect to the other people with little things like that. Little Manners are things. not a big big thing. You don't have to be like you know. Okay. Manners create magic. Like for example, if I know someone's coming to my house and the woman loves yellow flowers, I'll try to buy yellow flowers. Of course. Of course. It's just a little adds a little magic. So you mean that manners can I have something to do with empathy? Well, I, I guess empathy, with, uh, but I, I, respect. Of maybe course. just like creating creating magic. That's what yeah. I. Think. Okay. Now I have a difficult question because. Uh, when I was, okay, we always, as you, you can see, we don't have, I have a few notes, but we don't really prepare this kind of talk because we want to keep it uh, fresh. I think. Um, oh, you did an outline. Though. A little bit, yeah. And while I was uh, just, you know, studying a little bit the subject, I stumbled about one thing I was absolutely not aware of. And people in the USA or, or are not French will probably laugh at me because I was absolutely not aware of. That's the reputation of the French people is that French people are rude. Is that true? Well, yeah, I don't think it's a big, yes, I don't think it's a big secret. And, and also people from um, New York City are known to be rude. Yes. And you know, my theory is that it's just exhausting to deal with tourists all the time because they feel so self-entitled to just get in your face and say, can you tell me where this restaurant is? Or, you know, and assuming they speak the same language and, uh, just like inundated, for example, if you're in New York, Times Square, everyone's there and it's almost embarrassing for a New Yorker to walk through Times Square because it's, it gets the reputation of being touristy. So they, they develop an attitude in these really popular cities that it, it's just too much. Okay. It's just too but much. But you're speaking here, uh, here of people involved with tourists, right, mainly. But as far I think as it's I a big know, the, the, the belief of people in the U.S. mainly that the French people globally are rude. Oh, I don't know. I'm just talking about the cause. I mean, it is a perception. Yeah. It's a matter of culture for me because, uh, well, I don't, I don't um, disagree with that. For example, when you want a waiter to notice you at a table in France, you have to fight because mm -hmm. he doesn't give a crap about you, basically, okay? Which is the reverse in America, but mm. for different reasons. Mm. So, because the salary of uh, waiters in America are uh, with the tip. But that's another subject altogether. Well, but one waiter is going to be waiting 20 tables in yes. France, where in America it's broken down to like seven tables a person, yeah. for example. Yeah. I mean, so... But I'd can I defend a little bit logistics. Uh, my, my country? And yes. can I defend a little bit our way of, um, of life? I think also is that... Um, well, I have the chance, because we are a couple which is French-American or American-French, so we live on, the both, on both sides of the pond. So we can say that we have a kind of an astute um, uh, perception of the different realities. Uh, there's one thing which is very different from my country, from our country here in France uh, and the US, mm -hmm. is that, or, or, or even, let's say, Anglo-Saxon country as a whole, is that, uh, first of all, that something that we, you maybe forget, but in French and also in Spanish, in Italian, in German, we have a difference between you, you say you, but us, we say vous, or for somebody we don't know, and tu, to somebody we know. Yes. And, well, I know there's some kind of equivalent in English is you and thou which is very different, but only used pretty if much in the Bible. Yeah, and, in, the uh, in, the, in the 1600s, maybe, in but England. that's but. one thing <laughs> I want to say. In France, when you don't know somebody, you will never say tu, which means you. You will say vous, which is a little bit more respectful way of addressing people. I wanted just to remind you this because it, it makes a huge difference between normally... Well, we have sir and ma'am. That's right. That's very That's um, right. But you understand similar. that you... Uh, yeah, but so I wanted just to let you know. And then a second thing is that, yes, it's true that people in America are super 
available, kind, um, they have good manners immediately. But uh, in my opinion, you make friends in America like that in three seconds. Very you know, fast. Very fast. Yeah, it okay? can be very fast. Okay. You're right. But the problem is that you uh, stop to be friends also very fast. Okay. Right. That's something I've been discussing with people in Canada, for example. They say, oh, the American, they can make you immediately their friends, but then they can forget you as fast as they uh, know you. Okay. This is different in France. Maybe a little bit difficult to win over. Mm -hmm. How do you say that? To, That's to, right. To, yeah. That's right. And a little bit more difficult. But friendship for us, this is so important. You know, so mm -hmm. I spoke about that with a friend who is at, on TV, is a Canadian, so he knows also a lot of the differences. Is, and he was, he said, there's something very, very important here is that friendship is, is cherished and is valued. Well, you know, that reminds me, you're exactly right. For example, even on uh, social media or text or um, messenger or anything like that, when, when a French person or European person writes, they'll say, hello. Yes. Um, and then they'll ask the question and then maybe even sign their name. Okay, an American and maybe English people can come. And if they know, they'll just go, um, question, Directly here it to is. The, to the heart of what do you think? Let yes. me know. Yes. I mean, no niceties, you know, no greeting, yes. no farewell. Yes. It's just boom. Mm. So that's a big difference, yeah. too. And, well, and the so value of friendship might be we tied can into say, that. We can say, I don't want to defend my country, but we can say that uh, there are different perception because there are different cultures also. Let's take the example of Japan, which is literally the other side of the spectrum. Mm. Everything in Japan is codified. You know, it's who's going who's gonna, to try to uh, decipher who's going the most important in a crowd of people and let this guy go first, for example, in the lift. You, we yes, witnessed this in Tokyo. We saw it. We that was really strange, you know. It was, and it's, yeah. uh, but for me, uh, uh, either, although I, I really respect Japanese culture and I love the Japanese culture, specifically in the sartorial world, you know, they are cherishing artisanship, craftsmanship, they are protecting their craftsmen and they were living gods, literally. Mm -hmm. But I also believe that their social codes for interacting with each other are very stiff and they are almost exhausting. So maybe all this subject of manners is also very linked to the culture in which you live. I'd like to finish with um, uh, one other thing about Americans um, and then we're going to give you the the, the the subject of the next shows we're going to specifically record together on the manners uh, as, a, as a whole subject because you ask for that so we're going to really deep dive into this but first of all uh, there's something that always shocked me in America and I spoke about with of my our good friend an artisan uh, recently uh, who is uh, providing some luxury goods for people who have some means. And he said, when we have two Americans in the shop, we know they're American, in, well, first of all, because they speak English, of course, but after 10 minutes, each of them has given to the other the size of his yards, uh, the, the side of his yacht, if he has one, the, the brand of his car, and uh, how much money he's making per year. This is for us the epitome of bad manners. But in America, it's very well accepted, right? Well, just sitting in an airport lounge, it, when we have Americans um, near us, we can hear everything they're saying usually. Yes. And usually they're trying to elevate themselves by saying some kind of accolade that they have in life. Yes. And it's almost like a competition to impress the other person. I'm not mm. saying all Americans do that because no, they don't, but we see it a lot. Yes. And uh, it is a difference in culture because the French, for example, would be mortified to do that. It yeah, would, it would almost it. be bizarre. You don't do it. No, it's no, and, and, and that's true. That's true. But yeah. I, you know, I was thinking about you and I and how our philosophy is, and I'm based upon our beliefs. It's more yeah. like uh, an attitude of. Uh, don't condemn and you won't be condemned. You yeah. know, don't uh, judge and you won't be judged. You speak about our Forgive and you'll be forgiven. Yeah. True, true. Yeah. But also there's the boundaries. Like if you are in a situation and you sense in your cells that it's a bad situation, you shake the dust off from that situation, you get out. So there's a balance between having good manners yes. and having boundaries. And yes. I think that balance is really important. I agree with you. Uh, and humility being the, 
the, the, the main important block of all this. And I think manners at one moment is taking care about other people and putting people first. And so just, this is very Christian. This is no secret. We are followers of Jesus Christ, and we are very comfortable with that. We study the Bible every day, and we try to apply this in our everyday life. This is not easy. Because pride is always heavy, is a yoke on every shoulder. It's true. But we try, yeah. and I think that we are linking manners with this. Uh, uh, whether you're Christian or not, it doesn't matter. But we are linking the subject of manners with the fact that you care for the people in front of you, and this is the most important. So, um, well, that's about it for this introduction about manners. Uh, we are planning to record very, um, very um, soon. Uh, a few episodes. First, uh, we've been asked for this many, many times, how to receive people at your home, so the art of setting up a table. This is very interesting, and you will see that the way we do it in France, the way they do it in English, and by extension in the US, it's, uh, there's a little bit of differences, and there's explanation, historical explanation and etiquette explanation. So we'll we'll start with how a kid could learn to set a table. Yes. And then if the rest bores you, you can stop the video. Exactly. But, but yeah, it, it could go quite um, deep, I guess exactly. you could say. Then we'll continue with another episode called How to Behave on the Table. You know, there's a lot of questions. Do you put your, your uh, how do you call this? Your, your elbows. Your, your Hood. what? Hood. No, your could, elbows. Your elbows. Sorry, sometimes we speak French, sometimes we speak English, and I'm losing my, my English. Your elbows, or have you do this, or do you do that? You know in France we do this. In, in America and it, in, in England you do that. You don't do that in France because it seems like you have something to hide. Anyway, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to deep There's dive into it like because that. that's very interesting. And also, of course, we're going to come back to the, to the, in another episode to the core of our subjects on tutorial talk, which is suits codes. You know, do you button or unbutton your suit at a table? And how do you behave, you know, when you have, can you unbutton uh, your suit when you're inside? What are the rules about that? You know, there's still a lot of very interesting, uh, what say, I don't like the word rules. I'd say conventions, a way to behave. Right. Codes. Once again, social codes that are very important. Uh, we're going to also, after that, dedicate um, um, a chapter to something we love to talk about. It's how to travel elegantly yes. and what are the codes while you're traveling. We, we have a lot to say on this There's subject. a lot, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yes. a lot to say. And then we're going to finish this series uh, with something which is uh, um, uh, Sonia's idea. We, try, we will try to list the biggest signs of class. How do you notice somebody has class? And when we say class, we don't speak about money. We don't speak about possession. We speak about way to behave with others. That's right. And oh, to wrap up, yep. You can wrap up, but you told me something before we started this yes. session. Yes. You said, let's think of someone who stands out in our mind. Who this had is great what, manners. how I wanted to wrap oh, up. I didn't know. I said, okay, do you sorry. remember? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, cool. <laughs> somebody or situation in your life. I remember one. I selected one because I prepared a little bit. Uh, do you remember one example? Give us one example where manners really, really matter and in so your life. Instead of sitting around thinking about it, I just took the first thing that popped into my head. Yes. Because I think there's probably many of them. Yes. First thing that popped into my head, sorry if it sounds cliche, but it is when Lyle Roblin, our photographer, went yeah. to Italy with us for three years yes and as hot as it was during some of that time there he would always carry everything even if he looked like the you know the baggage boy or the bellhop I mean every time even if we weren't exactly getting along at that moment or we we're getting along great it didn't matter yes he was so consistent it was like in his blood he yeah. had to carry everything of everybody's and you know he's a he was a supermodel once yes. and I mean he had he was sweating I mean that that was sort of anathema to his um vanity yeah but he didn't care he did it and he did it with joy and it wasn't trying to you know make a point or anything yeah. and wow and how much easier it was to write the italian gentleman yeah. with him being in this attitude of service yeah but so Lyle, that's what what kept in what stayed in my mind like um, he's a gentleman yeah yeah he is. for sure yeah, and he, he has good fantastic qualities and that that's funny that you remember that me i remember somebody else I will not say his own name is all, all his name is his name is first name is Murray. Oh, He's yes. from Australia. 
uh, we can say this is a guy with a with well successful let's say extremely successful person so he can basically have whatever he wants but each time we were going out with him and his wife for dinner or whatever visit and etc any every time we were entering a place he will hug when it was possible and according to the culture or at least greet every waiter every worker that was here before sitting down and this is for me an incredible lesson the way you look at people who are obviously not of your social class who are a little bit you know more working class the way you behave and i've never seen this man and we spend quite a fair amount of time with well, these people i've never seen him looking down on anybody which is amazing this is for me the epitome of class and manners and if i may qualify murray and his wife denise they're very wealthy yes. they're very well to do they don't need to make the effort exactly to greet people who are of service in any way and murray went so far yes. as if he saw a, a service a person in his service that was struggling yes he would like at the end get up and hug that person yes. which probably really shocked them but then you also saw this joy come into that person's life it was beautiful this is a beautiful example the, those two examples lyle and murray they are a beautiful example on how manners are have nothing to do with stiffness there's nothing to do with social class fight. They have nothing to do with all this. They can really uh, harvest great dividends and just make people feel good around you. This is, for me, what manners are all about. So thank you, darling, for this beautiful discussion full of joy, of spirit, and of manners. And I'm pleasure. sorry if I, I, I cut you in, in your sentence from time to time. No, I, I didn't yeah, feel that way. I try to improve myself on that because I receive a lot of commands on that say, let Sonia speak. No, I think we just have a tempo now. I think we've developed a tempo. Exactly. I hope anyway. So thank you very much for thank that. Thank you. And uh, everybody, we give you an appointment to the next episode of Sotorial Talks. In the meantime, dress up and display good manners with everybody. Bye-bye, my friends. Bye. Cheers. Bye. See you.